Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman. We're continuing our studies in the book of Hebrews. Specifically, we're going to be looking at verses 20, 21, and 22 of Hebrews 11 today, which is our Sunday meeting service. Before we uh, look at God's Word, let's stop, pray, and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, thank you for each person looking in today. Thank you for eternal life in Jesus and all that you do for us. Use this time in your Word to give glory and honor to you. Thank you for everything you give and do. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Follow with me, please, as we read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 20, 21, and 22. It says this, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Now, there's a short little phrase at the end of verse 20, which is important for this portion in the book of Hebrews and also takes us back to the first book of the scriptures, the book of Genesis. Now, the little phrase is, things to come. It simply means things looking forward down the line of time. Now, go with me, please, if you would, for a moment or two, to Genesis chapter 27. And these are the things to come, which are spoken of and made mention of as they originate here in Genesis 27, furthering taking us back further to the events of Genesis chapter 12, 15, 16, etc. Now, God called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees, told him to go to a land that he would show them, and made a promise to him, initiating the covenant in Genesis 12, 1 to 3. He gave him promise of a land, promise of a blessing to all the families of the earth, and also a promise of a family. He was at an advanced age when he left for, from Ur of the Chaldees, and when they finally did have a child, which was prophesied to them, first uh, in the promises of Genesis 12, and then that within a year, in Genesis 18, just prior to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, at the time that God visited Abraham in the person of those three angels that came to see him, the three men, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in figurative form, you might say there. And a promise of a son was given. That son was Isaac. And that is where we pick up today. Now, in the previous portion in Genesis, excuse me, in Hebrews, when we were looking there last time, we talked about the promises and the faith exhibited by Abraham. Abraham is considered to be the father of the Hebrew nation. Even till today, his name is revered as close to that of Moses, who was the great lawgiver. Abraham had the son of promise, Isaac, late in life. And in Genesis chapter 27, here is Isaac, that son of promise, bestowing upon Jacob, the second born, the promise or the a blessing that would normally go to the firstborn. Now, there's all kinds of story of him being the supplanter and the one who would take away, uh, steal the blessing, and there is a lot of unfortunate theological anti-Semitism that comes out of that, where the Jewish people are uh, made to look as to be people who are dishonest by their means of uh, using the same tactics as Jacob used here. Regardless of what was done on the human front, God in his sovereignty allowed it. Remember, at the birth of Isaac, uh, Jacob, and Esau, uh, Jacob came out grasping onto the heel of Esau, so there was even battle in the womb between these two brothers. And these two brothers would go on to have battle in the physical life here on planet Earth. And here was Jacob being coached by his mother to go and take the blessing that should have gone to the firstborn, Esau. Now we back it up a little bit from there. Esau had sold his birthright for literally a pot of soup. Esau is seen as uh, by many in scripture as not being righteous enough of a man to um, actually to take the blessing that would go to the firstborn, hence 
God gave it to Jacob. And here he has done the same thing here. Regardless of the human uh, agency that uses the situation and takes something that should not belong to them, God allowed it. Look at it says here in verse 27 and uh, further in Genesis 27, we read this. He came near, kissed him, and smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is, son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. So uh, Jacob went in wearing a rough garment that would have the smell of the animals of the field in order to impersonate his brother Esau, who was a man of the field. Jacob was a man of the tents. Verse 28. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over my brethren, thy brethren, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be every one that blesses thee. So a blessing and a cursing is promised to those who would bless or curse the descendants of this one, the supplanter, so to speak. Jacob who takes the blessing that God would have him to have anyways and blessing and cursing has continued to follow after the Jewish people from the beginning of their being called out through Abraham those who bless Israel will be blessed those who curse Israel will be cursed now in verse 30 it says this and it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came in from his hunting and also had a meal prepared for his father. This is what was to happen here. And Esau comes in and finds out that the blessing has been taken from him. Well, Isaac um, is part of this and does not know what more to say to Esau other than your brother has taken your blessing. I have given it to him. I have nothing more to give to other than this. Verse 37 of Genesis 27. And Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren I have given him for servants, and with corn and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? Esau said to his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me even also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above, and by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt thy serve thy brother, and shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Esau became the father of the Edomite peoples across the Jordan River. They would never enjoy the same kind of blessing that the people of Jacob, and uh, after that the twelve tribes of Israel would enjoy. Uh, the thing is that there would be times where the Edomites would rise up and overtake the people of Israel. And there are many people today who are descendants of the Edomites of that time who still by times attempt to rise up and take away what belongs to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that would be the modern day land of Israel as well. So these kinds of battles continue. As there was a battle at this time in history between two brothers from the same family, and they would then be at odds with each other after that, it helps us to understand that the best way to know about the situation in the Middle East is that it is a family feud, and those feuds are oftentimes the worst kinds of things. Jacob is dispatched up to the north to be with Rebekah, Rebekah the mother of Jacob and Esau, with Laban, who is the brother of Rebekah. And there Jacob will find a place to live and stay for a number of years. He will find two wives up there, Leah and Rachel, and through Leah and Rachel will come the twelve sons that are born to the two marriages and they make up the twelve tribes of the house of Israel. Jacob will become an old man who will send his uh, sons down to Egypt to get food during a terrible famine in the land. This is a number of years after Joseph 
who is mentioned to us in the Hebrews passage as well, after Joseph is dispatched by being sold as a slave by his 11 other brothers who are just uh, jealous of him. He's the favorite of Jacob. So there's a pattern. In the family of Isaac and Rebekah, there was a subterfuge and a blessing was stolen. In the family of Jacob, mothered by Leah and Rachel, come 12 sons. And there are favorites as well, and Joseph was one of the favorites, which led to jealousy between the other 11 brothers with that brother, who sold, sell their brother, Joseph, as a slave into Egypt. We're going to go back to the Hebrews passage now, that you have the real backstory of this, and look again at verses 20, 21, and 22. And not unlike any of the other verses introducing these great people of faith, of the Hebrew Scriptures, it says this, verse 20, Hebrews 11, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. What were those things to come? Let's read on. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. All these three men who are of the next generation subsequent afterwards that would lead the house of Israel lived their lives by faith. A.T. Robertson, in his uh, comment on verse 20 here, simply makes the point of saying, the language speaks for itself. Go back to Genesis 27 to find out what it means things to come. Since we're literalists with the scripture, that's what we did today. Now let's bring it forward to Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the bottom line common denominator of every single person outlined in this chapter. And even though there were errors, human errors made, even though there were people who did things in a wrong way, they supplanted others, they sold a brother into slavery. God in his sovereignty used every one of those instances, every one of those moments to literally bring people to where he wanted them to be. You see, Isaac blessed Jacob and from Jacob come the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. Jacob, by faith, blessed the sons of Joseph and when he was worshiping, leaning on the top of his staff, on his deathbed, he blessed the sons of Joseph as his own. So you see, there's where our 12 tribes come from. And by faith, Joseph, and this is the things to come, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. Now, where were they departing from? Well, where was Joseph? Back up. Jacob sent his sons down to Egypt to get food. That's where they had their encounter and met up with the same brother, Joseph, that they sold as a slave years earlier and lied to their father saying he was eaten by wild animals. Look at his coat of many colors soiled with blood. Well, Joseph was used to preserve a nation. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, after the brothers have returned from burying their father Jacob in the caves of Machpelah, back in the land, the caves that had been bought by Abraham earlier on, they uh, come to their brother and say to him, and I'll paraphrase it, before father died, he said, you should be nice to us now. Uh, forget the things that we did to you in the past so that uh, we won't have any problems. Joseph could have really taken revenge on his brothers at this point. Their father was dead. Joseph was second in command in the land of Egypt. He literally held all the proverbial cards in their lives of his brothers who were living there under his authority. And he could have done whatever he wanted to do to them except there's a great demonstration of faith 
that Joseph shows to us in Genesis 50, verse 20, that even though his brothers, through their jealousy, through their anger, and their hatred of him, sold him as a slave, Joseph is able to look at the situation and say this, what you did you meant for one reason, but I know, and I'm paraphrasing this, that God meant this for the saving of many souls. You see, through the agency of Joseph being sold as a slave, he rose up out of the prisons of Egypt and eventually found himself as second in command under Pharaoh. And he was able to save his family, the descendants of Jacob, Abraham, in a time that was horrific with a drought and a pestilence back in the land of Canaan. He invited his family to come live with him and they survived as a nation. Now what is the things to come? The departing of the children of Israel from Egypt. Because when we get into the book of Exodus, one of the first things we read in the first chapter of Exodus is that there's a new Pharaoh now who does not know Joseph and does not know Israel. Probably they were Hyksos who came down from the north who supplanted the Egyptians that Joseph had ruled under and with. And now there were new people on the uh, throne of Egypt, you might say, a new regime, a new administration. And they saw the Jewish people as subservient to them because they were shepherds. In the historical context of time, the shepherd in that part of the world was one of the lowest of the life of people that you could find. They were seen as just a little bit lower than the earth itself. And so Israel was a shepherd, animal-keeping nation of people in Egypt. But God preserved them. And as Jacob, uh, Joseph is saying here that he could see and made mention of the departing from Egypt to the land. And this would ha happen under the tutelage of Moses, the great lawgiver of Israel. This portion in the book of Hebrews exhibits the faith of three of the great patriarchs after Abraham. Had it not been for their faith, where would the Hebrew nation have been? These men were chosen because God in his omniscience knew who they were and knew the character by who they were that they would obey God. They weren't always successful in their obedience. They made their mistakes. Uh, Abraham went down to Egypt instead of trusting God during a time of, of, uh, of the lack of rain, etc., in the land, he went down to Egypt, and that's where Hagar came, and that's where they went in. To, he went into Hagar and had a child by Hagar, another Ishmaelite, who became uh, connected with the Edomites, and there you have more of the family feud in the land. The important thing, though, is that God overrules even when we, in our human agency, make mistakes. God only asks for faith. And the faith of these three men here, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, has been rewarded in that the nation of Israel continues today as a viable nation group of people who need to hear the gospel about Jesus the Messiah. This is who we are and this is what we teach about here in the scriptures about Israel's hope ministry where the gospel is still for the Jewish person as well as the Gentile, Romans 1.16. And we hope today some of what we have taught you can encourage you to uh, grow in your faith and have a burden and a concern for the nation people of Israel today. If you'd like to know more about us as a, an organization, please check out our website at www.ihopecanada.org. You'll find there the YouTube icon where you can click and find these messages on the book of Hebrews, the book of Acts, and also our recently completed series on Riding Out the Storm, a global uh, pandemic, a biblical response to the global pandemic, excuse me. We're a faith ministry. We trust God's people to be moved of God to meet our needs on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So if you would consider a gift to the work of Israel's Hope Ministry, this is the time of year, the summertime, where giving is down. And we would appreciate if you would consider giving at this time. 
Thanks for looking in today. Go to our website, www.ihopecanada.org. You can find there through uh, PayPal or an e-transfer or using uh, a check in the mail to our P.O. Box here, Box 47031, Blackburn Post Office, Ottawa, Canada. Or if you're in the United States, you will find also our address there to uh, I Hope USA, where you can give a gift to the work in Canada. Simply send it to I Hope USA 2330 Norton Lane, North Bloomfield, Ohio 44450. So we'll see you again next time. Thanks for looking in today. Until then, we say Shalom.